Hello there, and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at the quotient rule, so we can answer questions from exercise 9e. The quotient rule is basically how do we differentiate fractions, or where we've got one function on top of another function, and how do we differentiate that function, basically. So the types of functions that we're going to be looking to differentiate are y equals some function on the top, and then some function on the bottom. So it might be something like e to the x over sine x, or something like that. So one function on the top of a fraction um, with another function on the bottom of it. Um, my preferred way of writing the notation is like this. Some people would like to use u and v to represent different functions as well. u might be e to the x, v might be sine x, in exactly the same way. Uh, so, what we're going to look at, uh, just to briefly show you quickly, is how we do this differentiation. So, um, if uh, if we're differentiating f of x over g of x, then effectively we're doing fx plus delta x over gx plus delta x minus f of x over gx. And then a lot of maths happens, basically. Uh, there'll be much better videos to go through the exact reason of why this proof works, but uh, once we click over onto the next page, it is quite interesting to see how this proof is made up of, and if you're going to do maths at university, um, looking at these types of proofs here is a good way of um, preparing yourself for university. So, um, <clears throat> what we're going to see here then, and as a summary, uh, is we're going to see that if we have a function y equals f of x over g of x, then the rule is f dash x g x minus f x g dash x all over g of x squared. So that's the g function squared on the bottom. And the quite good thing about this one is that you get it in the formula booklet. So it's written exactly like this. So it is quite useful to have um, some practice of using the quotient rule when it's in this notation here. So you differentiate the top first times by the bottom, then you subtract the top function and the uh, multiply that by the derivative of the bottom function second, and then you divide that all by the denominator function squared, the g function squared. Okay, so that's the rule. Uh, make sure you've got it to hand when you're doing these types of questions. And actually, it's really easy to identify when we're going to use the quotient rule because uh, we're going to have a fraction. So in this case here, y equals x over 2x plus 5. We can clearly see we've got a fraction here, so we know we need to use the quotient rule for this case here. It's not going to be the product rule. It's not going to be the chain rule. The product rule multiplies two functions together. The quotient rule is the composite of two functions. Here we've clearly got a fraction of two functions. So a nice place to start would be to write out f of x equals x, the numerator, differentiate that and you get 1. <clears throat> the g of x function is 2x plus 5, differentiate that and you get 2. And then the next thing you need to do is just now apply the quotient rule. So it's going to be 1 times 2x plus 5 minus x times 2, and then divide that all by the g of x function squared, 2x plus 5, all squared. So um, the f of x differentiated function is 1, the g of x function is 2x plus 5, then it's a subtract, so you've got to get this the right way around, otherwise your answer is going to come out as a negative version of what it actually should be. And then we subtract the f function, which is x, and then we subtract the that, that multiplied by the uh, g function differentiated, which is 2, that should be blue there. And then we divide this whole thing by the g of x function squared. And when we simplify this all together, we're going to get 2x plus 5 minus 2x. So the 2x's cancel out, and we're just left with 5. So it's just 5 over 2x plus 5 all squared. So there we are. That's how we do that one. A slightly more difficult one here. y equals sine x all over e to the 2x. So once again, I would write out f of x equals sine x, the numerator, and then the differential is cos um, of this function. Then g of x is the function on the bottom, that's e to the 2x, and then the differential of this is 2e to the 2x. 
And then all that's left for us to do is just to apply this rule. Go into the formula booklet, make sure you're not getting it wrong. You might as well check it if it is in the formula booklet instead of thinking you know it off by heart. You might know it off by heart, but it's always good to check. <coughs> so it's going to be the, <coughs> the f function differentiated times the g function minus the f function times the g function differentiated. So substitute all of them into your uh, brackets and into your function. <coughs> and this is what you get. e to the 2x, and I've factorised out e to the 2x. Brackets cos x minus 2 sine x all over e to the 4x. And you might even cancel down e to the 2x's on the numerator and the denominator there to leave that as your final answer. Right, OK, so that's basically it. That's all you need to do. So have a go at this question here, these two questions here on your own. Write out f of x equals g of x equals, differentiate both of them, and then just apply the rule. Nice and easy. Uh, pause the video and try these two questions out. OK, so the first one then, f of x equals 2 sine... Sorry, sine 2x, I was getting a bit ahead of myself there trying to differentiate it already. <clears throat> uh, the differential of f is 2 cos 2x. The g function is e to the x and the g derivative is e to the x as well. Now the quotient rule here is the differential of f first times it by the g function, so it's going to be 2 cos 2x e to the x minus, and then it's the other way around, sine 2x e to the x, and that's all going to be over the g function squared, that's going to be e to the x all squared. Now we can simplify this by cancelling out an e from the top and bottom, so my final answer here is going to be 2 cos 2x minus sine 2x all over e to the x. And that's my simplified answer. OK, good. So next question here is the second one. A little bit of a tricky chain rule part on the top. So we're going to have to take that one nice and slowly. f of x equals 3x plus 5 to the power of 7. So this is a chain rule function where we've got uh, one function inside another function. 3x plus 5 is inside the function of x to the 7. So in this case here, you differentiate the inside first, then you differentiate the outside. So it's going to be 7, 3x plus 5 to the power of 6. And simplifying this, we're going to get 21, 3x plus 5 to the power of 6. And the g function, that's a little bit easier. Ln x differentiates to 1 over x. OK, so now let's apply the quotient rule. So it's going to be dy by dx equals... Uh, so we differentiate the f function first. So 21, 3x plus 5 to the power of 6 times by ln x minus 3x plus 5 to the power of 7 times by 1 over x all over the g function squared, that's going to be ln of x <coughs> squared. Now we can't cancel out lens from the top and the bottom here because this right hand part of the numerator doesn't have a ln in it. If we were to um, factorise out a ln or cancel out a ln it would need to be able to factorise from the top. So we can't factorise out a ln and cancel it from the top and bottom. But uh, I am going to simplify it a little bit because I'm not happy with this triple tiered fraction that I've now created. Um, the way that I can get rid of this 1 over x is effectively if I times top and bottom by x. Effectively, when you times top and bottom by x, you don't actually change the function, you just write it in a different form. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to times the top of the left-hand part by x. So it's going to be 21x, 3x plus 5 to the power of 6, ln x, 
minus 3x plus 5 to the power of 7. Because the 1 over x times the x will give you uh, 1, which will just cancel out. And then on the numerator, it's going to be x ln x to the power of 2. And there we are. That's how I would leave my final answer. Um, don't leave your final answer with a 1 over x, so either on the top or on the bottom. It doesn't look particularly um, pleasant, and um, we don't really want triple tiered fractions in our answers. So you can times the top and the bottom of your fraction by whatever the numerator of your fraction is to get rid of it. But bear in mind it's going to appear on the top left and on the bottom. <clears throat> Right, so have plenty of go at the questions from exercise 9e. Make sure you have a go at the problem solving and the uh, exam style questions as well. But do have a go at the regular bog standard practice like we have here as well. Okay, thanks very much for watching.